Dear viewers, greetings. In this present video, we are going to see about the evaluation of chemical disinfectants. Um, before discussing the methods of evaluation of chemical disinfectants, I like to discuss about the required concentration and timing for the chemical destruction of microorganisms. The first disinfectant is chlorine. Uh, 50 ppm of chlorine is required for the destruction of mycobacterium tuberculosis and it takes 50 seconds. 0.1 ppm of chlorine is required for the destruction of entamoeba cyst and it takes 150 minutes. 3 ppm of chlorine is required for the destruction of hepatitis A virus and it needs 30 minutes. The next disinfectant is ethyl alcohol or ethanol. 70% ethanol is required for the destruction of Staph aureus, E. coli and polio virus and the required time is 10 minutes for Staphylococcus aureus, 2 minutes for Escherichia coli and 10 minutes for polio virus. The next disinfectant is hydrogen peroxide. 3% hydrogen peroxide is required for the destruction of Staphylococcus aureus, Neisseria gonorrhea and herpes simplex virus. 12.5 second is required for the destruction of Staphylococcus aureus. 0.3 seconds is required for the destruction of Neisseria gonorrhea and 12.8 seconds required for the destruction of herpes simplex virus. The next disinfectant is uh, quaternary ammonium compounds. 450 ppm of uh, quaternary ammonium compounds is required for the destruction of Staphylococcus aureus and it takes 10 minutes for destruction. 300 ppm of ammonium compounds are required for the destruction of Salmonella typhi and it needs 10 minutes. And finally, ethylene oxide gas. 500 mg per liter of ethylene oxide gas is required for the destruction of Staphylococcus faecalis and it requires 2 to 4 minutes. And finally, 10,000 mg per liter of ethylene oxide gas is required for the destruction of influenza virus and it requires 25 hours for destruction. And next is methods for evaluation of disinfectants. Uh, widely, five methods are used for the evaluation of disinfectants. They are phenol coefficient test, filter paper method, used dilution test, in-use test or kelsey maurer test, and finally, kelsey sykes capacity test. These five tests are used for the evaluation of chemical disinfectants. The first test for the evaluation of the disinfectants is phenol coefficient test. Phenol. Uh, phenol was previously called as uh, carbolic acid and it is recognized as the first chemical agent with excellent antimicrobial properties and it was used by Joseph Lister in the year 1867. At the concentration of 0.1% uh, to 1% the phenol is bacteriostatic in nature, that is, uh, it stops the reproduction of bacteria. At higher concentration, that is uh, from 1% to 2%, phenol is fungicidal and bactericidal in nature, that is, it destroys the fungus of bacteria. A phenol can kill anthrax spores at 5% concentration within 48 hours. Although phenol has an excellent antiseptic properties, it is not used as a common, an common antiseptic due to its systemic toxicity on the skin. And next is uh, method of testing of uh, phenol coefficient. Uh, since Joseph Lister introduced uh, the phenol as the first disinfectant, uh, it has been the standard disinfectant to which other disinfectants are compared under the same conditions. Uh, the phenol coefficient is a number obtained by dividing dilution ratio of the test disinfectant with the dilution ratio of the phenol. In simple, uh, phenol coefficient is equal to dilution rate of the disinfectant divided by dilution rate of the phenol. For example, uh, the dilution rate of the test disinfectant is 500 and the dilution rate of the phenol is 100 means the overall phenol coefficient is 5. Uh, this is the method for calculating the phenol coefficient. Uh, this slide shows the uh, method of calculation of uh, phenol coefficient of various chemical disinfectants. 
In 1903, uh, British chemist Samuel Riedel and J.T. Ansel Walker established a protocol to compare the effectiveness of a variety of chemicals with that of phenol using their two test organisms, Staphylococcus aureus and Salmonella typhi. And they exposed the test bacteria to the antimicrobial chemical solution, uh, which was diluted in uh, water for 7.5 minutes. Uh, they then calculated a phenol coefficient for each chemical for each of the two bacteria tested. Uh, next, this slide shows the phenol coefficient of uh, various chemical disinfectants against the two bacterial pathogens, Staphylococcus aureus and Salmonella typhi, based on the protocol uh, which was proposed in 1903 by the British chemist Samuel Riddle and J.T. Anisel Walker. And here, uh, the phenol coefficient of 1 means that the chemical agent has about the same level of phenols. And next, a chemical agent with phenol coefficient of less than 1 is less effective than phenol. An example for this is uh, formalin. Uh, formalin with the phenol coefficient of 0.3 for Staphylococcus aureus, for Staphylococcus aureus and 0.7 for Salmonella typhi. And next, a chemical agent with a phenol, phenol coefficient greater than 1 is more effective than phenol. For example, Lysol. This Lysol has a, a coefficient of 5 against the Staphylococcus aureus, but only 3.2 when used on Salmonella typhi, whereas the ethyl alcohol or ethanol has a value of 6.3 against both for both Staphylococcus aureus and Salmonella typhi. And finally, the chloramine has a phenol coefficient of 133 against the Staphylococcus aureus and 100 against the Salmonella typhi respectively. The next is factors affecting phenol coefficient test. Uh, totally, uh, four major factors affects the disinfectants and thus produce wrong results for the phenol coefficient test. Uh, the factors are uh, temperature, pH, surface activity and presence of interfering substances. The first factor is temperature. An increase in temperature has uh, shown increased disinfectant properties. The second factor is pH. Optimum growth is achieved at pH between 6 to 8. Thus, the recommended pH for the test is 7.5. The third factor is uh, surface activity. The surface active compounds in low concentration may increase the disinfectant power. And finally, the fourth factor is uh, the presence of interfering substances. Uh, interfering substances uh, such as uh, certain salts may hinder disinfectant activity. These four are the factors affecting the phenol coefficient test. Uh, and finally, limitations of uh, phenol coefficient test. The first limitation is the phenol coefficient test are uh, designed specifically for determining the disinfectant power of uh, phenol-like disinfectants. Uh, however, uh, some chemicals whose structure, for example, uh, chlorine, picric acid, hydrogen peroxide, formalin, and iodine. Uh, these chemicals uh, whose structure and properties are completely different from phenol, but our germicides have been compared with phenol. This is the first limitation. The second limitation is, in some cases, uh, water insoluble compounds are compared with the phenol, either in their pure form or diluted in other kinds of uh, solvents. Uh, such misuse of phenol coefficient creates a confusion. The third limitation is, it is also not recommended to use uh, phenol coefficient for testing antiseptics because uh, antiseptics are not used to kill the bacillus species or bacillus uh, typhosis usually used in the phenol test. And finally, the different antiseptics kill different bacteria with varying antiseptic power. One example is uh, tincture iodine, uh, which is 760 times more disinfecting uh, compared to 5% phenol solution. However, in reality, 
tincture iodine is not uh, 760 times more germicidal than 5 percentage phenol in practical conditions. That's all about the phenol coefficient test. And the second method uh, for the evaluation of the uh, chemical disinfectant is a uh, filter paper method uh, which is also called as uh, the disc diffusion method. And the filter paper method of uh, evaluating a chemical agent is uh, simpler than determining a phenol coefficient and it also uses a small filter paper disc uh, which was uh, soaked with uh, different chemical agents. A disc of uh, filter paper is soaked with a chemical and placed on a agar plate uh, particularly the muller hinton agar plates that has been previously inoculated and incubated with the test organisms. And after 24 hours incubation, if the chemical is effective, a clear zone representing the inhibition growth can be seen around the disc like this. The third method for the evaluation of the chemical disinfectant is a use dilution test. The use dilution test is commonly used to determine a chemical's disinfection effectiveness on an inanimate surfaces. Uh, for this test, a cylinder of uh, stainless steel or glass is uh, dipped in a culture of uh, targeted microorganisms and then dried at 37 degrees Celsius. The cylinder is then dipped in a solution of disinfectant at various concentrations for 10 minutes at 20 degrees Celsius. And finally, uh, the cylinder is transferred to a new test tube containing uh, fresh sterile medium that does not contain disinfectants and this test tube is incubated for 48 hours. The bacterial survival is demonstrated by the presence of turbidity in the medium uh, whereas a killing of the target organisms on the cylinder by the disinfectant will not produce any turbidity. And the fourth method uh, used for the evaluation of the chemical disinfectant is in-use test or calcimorer test. A in-use test or calcimorer test can determine whether an actively used solution of disinfectant is microbially contaminated or not. Here in this test, uh, 1 ml of the used disinfectant is diluted into 9 ml of the sterile broth medium that also contains the disinfectant in in inactivator that is a compound to inactivate that disinfectant and from this uh, 10 drops totaling approximately 0.2 ml of the mixer are inoculated onto each of the two agar plates. Uh, one plate is incubated at 37 degrees Celsius for 3 days and the other is incubated at room temperature for 7 days. The plates are monitored for growth of uh, microbial colonies and uh, growth of 5 or more colonies on either plate suggests that the viable microbial cells existed in the disinfectant solution and that is contaminated. The final method for the evaluation of the disinfectant is calcite capacity test. A calcite capacity test is used to detect the efficiency of the disinfectants under both clean and dirty conditions. The method can be carried out under either clean or dirty conditions. The dilutions of the disinfectants are made in hot water for clean conditions and in ease suspension for dirty conditions. Depending on the type of disinfectants, a single organism is selected from uh, Staphylococcus aureus, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, Proteus vulgaris and Escherichia coli. In this test, uh, 1 ml of the bacterial inoculum was added into the disinfectants in 3 successive lots uh, at 0 minutes, 10 minutes and 20 minutes and the contact time of the disinfectant and the test bacteria is 8 minutes. The 3 sets of uh, 5 replicate cultures uh, corresponding to each challenge are incubated at 32 degrees Celsius for 48 hours and the growth is assessed by turbidity. The disinfectant is evaluated on its ability to kill the microorganisms or lack of it and the result is reported as pass or fail. The negative results that is the presence of turbidity are those uh, that have more than one negative culture in a set. 
if the negative culture are found in the first challenge the concentration of the disinfectant should be increased to 1.5 ml for the second challenge and 2 ml for the further third challenge the third challenge is not indicated in the pass or uh, fail criteria uh, but the positive culture that is uh, no bacterial growth or no turbidity uh, serve as the uh, inbuilt controls if there are uh, no positive cultures of the after the third challenge it shows the in disinfectants are completely ineffective that that's all about the various methods of evaluation of disinfectants dear viewers thank you for your support thank you